So this idea of content merchandising, it actually came from uh, a late afternoon conversation with Khalif. We were talking about this event, and we were talking about you know, the content for the event, and then we started talking about law firm content and you know, how that would, you know, what, what were some of the changes, what were people doing, how does co content marketing sort of evolve. And after that, I, it was a Friday afternoon, I was, got into my car, and I went to Whole Foods. Uh, I had to pick up some food for dinner. So I was in Whole Foods thinking about, I had all this content stuff going around in my head. And um, the Whole Foods I was at, it, I parked in the basement, they have to take an elevator up. And I get off the elevator, and there's this woman standing there who works at Whole Foods. And she has this name tag on, it says, you know, Julie Smith, or whatever her name was, and it said, in-store marketing. And I said to myself, I didn't know they had in-store marketing. Um, which I, you know, should, should have known better with Whole Foods. But then I started, you know, I'm going down the produce aisle, and I'm thinking, like, what's up with this, you know, in-store marketing? And all of a sudden, in my head pops this idea of, like, content merchandising. You know, are law firm websites really that different from Whole Foods? And I know you all agree with that, because that's a rational thought. Um, <laughs> but I started thinking, you know, actually, maybe they are somewhat similar. Because, you know, Whole Foods has shelves crammed with content. Websites have, you know, cr are crammed full of content. Products compete for your attention. Content also competes for your attention. Every product thinks it's the best. I can't possibly comment on how that <laughs> reflects for law firms. Product development is costly, and from a marketing standpoint, I mean, I feel all of your pain because content development is costly. It's either you're paying someone to do it, you're doing it yourself, you're wasting your time chasing people down to get them to do it. So it's a, a very costly um, effort. But in the end, the goal is sort of the same for both law firm websites and also for grocery stores. Ultimately, you're just trying to get the right eyeballs in front of the right product or the right content to ultimately drive selection. It's really that simple. So I sort of start, you know, sorry, I actually sent a text message to Kalev, like I was in the dairy aisle at that point, and I was like, hey Kalev, what do you think about content merchandising? And he's like, oh yeah, that sounds really cool, you should do that. So little known fact about me, I was actually a retail major um, for one year at Syracuse, go orange. Um, <laughs> and apart from what John and Jeff said, it was not, I didn't study how to shop. <laughs> um, I was actually studying how to sell. You know, how do you construct a store to optimize your sales. And I actually think, I picked a couple principles. I sort of went back to my house and got all my retail books out, dusted them off. I picked a couple principles, principles that I thought actually are very similar to websites and also how you display content. So the first is in-store display, which is, from what I think, it's sort of you know, how you construct the store what does the traffic flow look like? Where do you put your promotional items? To me, that's very similar to information architecture of a website. You know, where do you put your promotional items? How do you get people to actually cross-sell or upsell? It's all sort of about the planning of the website. And then the second piece is visual display, which is, it's really the fun part. It's the creative. It's those really cool windows that you see that attract your attention. I mean, if you have a break, go over to Macy's, because they just did the, the Christmas windows. Um, and it's sort of that thing that's sort of, you know, just at a very basic level, your imagination is captured and it pulls you into the store. So I'm going to go through a couple examples. The three that I picked out were department displays, vertical merchandising, and product groupings. And I'm going to show you some examples and hopefully convince you that these actually have something to do with law firm websites. This is department display, and most of you are thinking, Jen, why did you go to Kalev's um, closet and take a picture of it? <laughs> I didn't. This is just a very fancy department store. But um, as you can see, you, you, you all know these displays in stores, you know, when you walk through the women's area or the men's area. The interesting thing about department displays is that ultimately they're trying to upsell you. They're not, they don't, you know, they don't think you're going to go in there and buy the bag and the hat and the sweater and the shirt. You know, that's a little delusional, um, but they think that maybe you're going to pick up the sweater and say, hey, this shirt goes really well with it. I'm going to get the two. I'm going to try it on. So, you know, from their standpoint, it really is just a matter of upselling one item. 
if you can. The other thing that I think is really cool about it is that in this particular instance, they've actually created a collection. So this is the weekend collection, right? So you can start picturing yourself, how does this play out with my weekend? Do I need a bag? Do I need a hat? You start to sort of picture yourself in that area. I think that this is very similar to practice areas. Because, in fact, I found a really good example of it. Dwayne Morris's um, practice areas. If you go in there, it's practice area equals men department. Then within that, they have, this was within the healthcare practice, they have, um, you know, information for physicians, information for hospitals, information for long-term care. And I thought, well, that's sort of like a collection. They're basically saying, if you're trying to picture yourself as a physician, these are all the legal health care needs you have. I'm not suggesting that you're going to buy all of them, but, but you may pick one and the other, knowing that this is custom fit for you, know, you as a physician. So I thought that was a really interesting example. Next one. OK, anyone who knows me, I'm a big Crocs fan. Um, <laughs> not these ones, but you know those, they have new really cool Crocs. Um, it is, no, Kalev, it's possible. Um, so the interesting about the thing about this, has anybody been in a croc store? Okay. They use this trick called vertical merchandising, which basically draws your eye up, right? Like it's, it takes over the entire wall. And the thing that's really interesting about it is that you see every color, you know what size, because it goes from small to, you know, big size, small sizes, big sizes. Um, and you can see sort of this broad range of product or the, the, the depth of product they have. To me, that's like experience. Because you're, you're trying to show your audience that you have a great amount of experience, but then you're also giving them the opportunity to self-select the one that's the exact right fit for them. So I think that sort of this, this idea of overwhelming people in some ways, but get, then giving some, using some of the tools that Kyle have talked about to sort of self-select is interesting. The last one, this is my favorite. Um, this is from Whole Foods. Um, this is sort of interesting. It's, it's the idea of product groups. And the piece that I like about this is that they are not related products. So this is not like the men's department, right? Like where you expect to see all those things. These are disparate product groups brought together to sort of solve a shopper's problem. The problem in this case is I'm having people over for cocktails. What do I serve them? Well, got my cheese, got my wine, got my crackers. It sort of says these things go together and they help solve your problems. I think this is interesting because I'll show you an example in a little bit, but you know, if you think about what CEOs are thinking about or what general counsel are thinking about, you know, they're thinking about globalization. They might not be thinking about industries or practice areas, but they're thinking, how do I get into an emerging market? And so if you're able to pull together these disparate product groups and sort of say, this is how it all works together, it helps them sort of visualize and solve their problem. So I like that. And I like cheese, so that's a good. <laughs> OK, so that was sort of the, the, the nuts and bolts of display. So the next part is really fun because it's sort of visual displays. Um, and these are all the, the fun things that you do in store. The first is, once you see this, you're going you're gonna to see it everywhere. I mean, John was telling me the other day, he's like, every time I go in stores, I see this. Um, pyramids. They construct uh, displays in stores or in windows so that your eye is focused on the top first and then brought down to the bottom. You'll see it in a pyramid. And you'll see this a lot in windows. Um, I think it's just a natural way that your eye moves, but it also allows you to group products together. The next one is odd numbers. You'll see Crate and Barrel does this all the time. Threes, fives, because it actually is a balance to your eye. There's always something in the middle and something on two sides. And then the last one is storytelling. Um, this is Herod's. Love Herod's. They always have great windows. Um, the thing that's really cool about storytelling, and I think this is really applicable actually to sort of case studies, it could be. Um, is that it allows you to create a really creative way of bringing someone in, but also displaying a disparate amount of content or products. So in this case, they have you know, a beautiful dress. It's the Wizard of Oz. Um, beautiful Dorothy there. They have a television here with the Wizard of Oz. They have a little picnic down there along the yellow brick road. 
So these products don't make any sense together. There's no reason for them to be in a window, except for they're trying to cross-sell you. They're trying to get you to spend more because you walk by and you say, actually, I do need a new TV in addition to my, ba- my ball gown. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's actually just a creative way of like tying together these items. So you might be thinking, that's great, Jen. You clearly have spent a ton of time in stores. Maybe you should get back in, in, in your office and spend some time in front of a, um, you know, on a website. Has anybody ever used Airbnb? Cool. So Airbnb is essentially a site. It's, it, the old one was, or the, the first one was VRBO. And this is a great example of design, sort of pushing one brand ahead of the other. VRBO never got a redesign. It's sort of this old, clunky site. Airbnb came along, and essentially what you can do is you can go in there, you can um, put in, like, I want to go to New York, these are my dates, I want my own apartment, and it gives you, you know, every single possible apartment that they have that you can rent out. Um, So you can search sort of the normal way to search. You can use, like, parameters, I want to spend, you know, $300 a night, whatever. But they are master content merchandisers, in my opinion. Because what they do is they use storytelling. They pull together products. And um, because honestly, it does, it does yurt so good, doesn't it? Um, but they pull together these products. Now, I could find this product right here. I could go to this yurt and find it from Hawaii. But how much more fun is it that I get this whole story about what it's like to stay in a yurt? And that you know, just quite simply by relating the content together, it makes such a great story. And they use odd numbers to actually display it, which is sort of interesting as well. Um, But they collect all these stories together. Um, So they have this whole page where they've developed all these collections. You'll be surprised to see that they've used pyramids to draw your eye up and down. Okay, this is a stretch, but just play along. Um, I sort of thought this was sort of like the vertical Crocs store. If you want to go to Paris, they have every shape and size of place in Paris. And they'll let you self-select based on where it is. So if you want to stay in the left bank, there's options there. If you want to stay in the right bank, there's options there. And to me, it sort of says, like, we know Paris. We've got everything that you would need. Stay, you know, choose us. A little bit closer to home, this is IBM. This is their um, insurance practice. I think this is an interesting department display because they have all of the related content around what they offer from an insurance perspective. But they also include their blogs, they include their experts, they include featured videos, case studies. So if you're really thinking about insurance, you know, they, they sort of lay out for you, these are the things that we can help you with, these are the things that we have to offer. You may have come in saying, I want front office overview, but you know, they might convince you a little bit to at least consider them for something else. And the last piece is product groupings. This is McKinsey. I know we use that a lot, but um, I think this is a really cool example of sort of, you know, the the cheese with the crackers and the wine. They basically said, you know, CEOs are trying to tackle emerging markets. How do we get into them? Who should we target? What do we do about our brand? And here they have things like, what cities should we be into? Um, They have interviews with people who have actually done it. So they're sort of telling you, these are all the things that you, as a CEO, need to sort of start thinking about these emerging markets. So what's next? Um, So when I showed this slide to John, he was like, huh, those were like all my favorite foods. (laughs) (laughs) And that's good, because there's actually a grocery store in New York who has created a man aisle, which has all the favorite foods of people like John. So I thought that worked well for for that uh, instance. But I think the interesting thing here, and you'll hear it a lot today, is just smarter targeting. It's less about, you know, groupings of, like, emerging markets, and it's sort of, okay, CEO of P&G, these are actually the things that you need. Or, you know, the GC of some other firm, these are the things that you need, and it gets more and more one-to-one. So I think you'll probably see that. And then the last one is... um, I know realer isn't a word, but um, realer experiences, which is, this is actually an example of an um, online retailer, or it's a grocery store in the UK who is creating sort of an online store that's a virtual store. 
So when Glenn was talking today about the 3D experience, it sort of starts to play out in this world as well. So that's it. My retail degree, well, my one year in retail actually did pay. <laughs> Thanks.